Hey everyone and welcome back to another tutorial on the channel. I've just came back from my vacation yesterday and I just want to say thank you so much for your support while I've been away and also um, thank you so much for the suggestions on what you would like to see on this channel moving forward. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do, be doing a lot more Octane of course and also a lot more simulations and motion graphics. So this channel has always been about like the product centered focus, um, making Blender like a commercial viable tool to use within product uh, renderers, uh, product rendering and uh, motion graphic. Um, so yeah, so in this tutorial today we are looking at light linking within an Octane and um, this is really cool where you can sort of like um, decide which objects are going to be affected by which light you want and you can exclude um, objects from lights and so on. Um, this is not something that I typically want to suggest doing because it might came all out quite easily uh, unnatural um, because you will do things that are not like physical accurate. Um, but of course it has its place within 3D it can be used a lot with like abstract renders, but also in product renders, it can be like a cool technique to use. So, um, and it's quite easy in Octane and I haven't seen anyone explain it yet. So I just wanted to do a quick video explaining it to you. So uh, this is our scene where we have our earpods here. Um, and I've just set up a texture environment um, and we can just turn that one up so we can start to see our scene. So. When I turn up to one, you can see here is our perspective where we have our earbuds and everything is lit up quite, um, yeah, quite even. I'm just going to turn it down a bit to 0 0.3, just so we get the reflections that sort of um, hide these shadows just a bit. But let's start adding our lights so we can see the effect. So, um, yeah. So uh, the first light that we are going to be adding is an area uh, octane area light so i'm just going to add this one here scale it down a bit oh this is a nice dramatic um <laughs> kind of effect here um i'm just going to rotate it a bit and move it out to the side just sort of like a, using it as a key light let me just move the plane in a bit so we can also see the light affecting our backdrop here so this is a quite a dark scene, a bit dramatic maybe. So I'm just turning this one up a bit, and I think this is this is nice for now. So as you can see here, we have one light here, and um, I'm just going to move this one out of our collection, um, and let me call this one um, just light one. And for this effect to be clear, we need another light also. So I'm just going to the same view and I'm going to duplicate this one, taking it down here, and then I'm just going to rotate it upwards. So we get uh, a light from the opposite direction. And as you can see now, our scene is uh, way more brighter and uh, we have a lot of light going uh, around, catch, uh, casting uh, shadows and stuff like this. I think I want to go into the shader editor and just pull down this light just to half the amount of the other one. Um, and we can call this one light two. Light two, just like this. So right now our scene is evenly lit. We have uh, our key light from here and we have uh, another light from the side here. Uh, and yeah, this is, I think this is good for now. So how are we going to use light linking? Well, I thought it would be cool to just sort of uh, make the backdrop a bit more interesting and make the products um, stand out a bit more from the backdrop. So I think I want to exclude our second light here, our light two from the backdrop. So this is actually quite easy with the dark chain. So I'm just going to show you how to do it. So we are going, uh, first of all, uh, under our render properties, um, you can see under our Octane kernel, 
down here we have something called light IDs. And this these light IDs is what is going to be used um, to tell Octane what lights uh, are going to affect what and 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 just tell Octane to separate lights from each other um, sort of a way. Um, but yeah, just remember that these IDs is what is important. So if we go into the shader editor, you can see if we pick our second light here and we have our text admission, down here we have a group called light pass ID. And this light pass ID can be turned all the way up to one, uh, up to eight from one. And this means that in within Octane, we have up to eight light pass IDs that we can give each light. So we have eight lights that we can sort of do this effect with. So you might guess right now that this light, we can just set it to one and our light two, we can set to light pass two. So now we have separated our two lights with the light pass ID. So right now we can sort of use this to tell Octane, okay, we have two lights and we wanna have our objects only be affected by one of these lights. So we wanted to exclude the backdrop from, from, the, from our second light. So our second light has a light pass ID on two. So if I go into the, if I click on the backdrop, we have our universal material and stuff like this. Under the object properties of our object, this is where we're going to do this. And we're going to do it under the Octane settings. And as you can see here, we have something called light pass mask. And this can be used to sort of mask out the light from this object. So right now, everything is on. Also our environment, we can also just turn this one off. Uh, it won't do much uh, because it's so low right now. Um, but you can see there are uh, numbers from one to eight here. And um, as you remember, we called our light two. Uh, we gave that an ID pass of two. So what we can do is we can take our plane and then we can click on this pass two here, making it not visible when it's uh, blue here. It's uh, visible to the light, and when we click on this, it will not be visible to the light. And when I click this, you can see we lose the um, the light on the backdrop here, but we still have it on our um, earbuds here. And uh, so this is the way to use it. Uh, if I turn the uh, text environment all the way down, you can see that we still have our lights up here. We can also do it the other way around, and as you can see here, now we uh, have excluded our first light from the backdrop. We're still choosing our backdrop. This is the object that we can control uh, based on the object properties here. But I wanted a, a strong key light from the right, and then I don't want the backdrop to be affected by the second light, but still, I still want this to be affected. So if I hide this one here, you can see that we are hiding it uh, from the backdrop here. And we can just turn this one up here a bit again. So yeah, so so this is basically how we are doing it. Uh, we can turn this one up and you can see that we are casted a, a brighter backdrop and we can turn it off and we lose that. Um, we can also play around with the camera visibility, the shadow visibility, if we want that, uh, the dirt visibility and stuff like this. Um, but this is basically how we are uh, dealing with light linking within Blender. Um, I can also turn the number one off and you can see now the backdrop um, is not affected by any lights whatsoever, only our environment, but it's so low that we don't see it. Um, so now we only have our light here. Um, we can also take our uh, earbud here. And we can say, okay, we don't want this to be affected by the second light. And you can see how this is um, kind of being removed from this light here. Um, I think I want these ones on again and maybe just keep this one on. So this is how you play around with the uh, light linking within Octane and Blender, as far as I know. And there might be other ways to play around with light linking and and do all sorts of cool things, but this is a really simple way to just quickly, um, 
you know, a constraint lies from from certain objects in your scene. So yeah, so this is all for the tutorial today, and uh, I will soon post another tutorial, uh, either being on Octane or simulations, but it will be product centered and it will be around motion graphics, of course. So, uh, so yeah, this is all for this tutorial. And uh, again, thank you so much for your support, everyone. Uh, remember to subscribe and like and all those things and comment down below if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, and a massive thank you to all of the patrons, of course. And they are what also motivates me to keep this channel uh, alive. So um, thank you so much to the patrons also. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you for the next one. Bye.